I don't think any of us expected to be six months in into this remote work life. I um, was hoping that, you know, this would only be for a few weeks. I'll be honest, I did not like remote work life the first week. I think I probably cried every other day. It was also raining that entire week. Um, and I also didn't have a carve out space in my home to feel that, you know, I, to feel productive. Um, with that being said, I think that connecting to folks that are not my own direct coworkers has been a way for me to, you know, still be creative and still connect with people. But um, this, you know, having these, you know, monthly CPC roundtables has also been a good um, vehicle for me to, you know, to connect with all of you that I normally would have seen at a conference or met. So I, I really like this. But with that being said, I do want this time for all of us, you know, to feel relaxed. Like we can definitely share ideas. This is definitely a safe, a safe space. Um, this is being recorded, so you want, you know, you do want to mind your P's and Q's. Um, but I put in the chat window a link um, for us to be able to kind of share um, those ideas, which I'm going to start sharing right now. And this is called the Fun Retro. So I have a couple of titles for us to share our thoughts and ideas, and we can kind of discuss them through together. Um, there will be a timer on each one of them. Um, so we'll be able to enter and this is anonymous. So feel free to enter, you know, um, how you feel. You don't necessarily have to say, you know, yes, I own this card, you know, once we talk it over, but let me go ahead and share my screen and then feel free to click on the link. And we can dive in there. So, uh, actually maybe I shouldn't share my screen because then you'll see who's in here, but is everybody on the link okay so far? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so we'll start with something fun and simple. So the first question here is, uh, what's going well for you during this time, this quarantine time? Um, what's keeping you grounded? So I'm gonna put a time in here for uh, maybe, let's put in here three minutes, um, and then we'll take some time to kind of type in our questions and we'll review it together. So go. And by the way, for right now, you're going to see just your cards. You're not going to be able to see everyone else. Um, and then once the timer is up, I'll be able to reveal everyone's cards together. So. Are we doing all of them, Lily? Uh, let's just do one column first, and then we'll do okay. the, the next column together. Would it be OK if I got a brief introduction of everybody? I don't know anybody on the call. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, it's <laughs> my fault. Um, I'll, 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 uh, so I'm Lillian. You can call me Lil, um, but I work for Blue Beam, and I'm your moderator. Um, I'll go ahead and let Walker introduce himself second, and then Brent, and then um, you can introduce yourself last, Sam. And then um, Satyam's here, um, and then he's going to be jumping in between different rooms. So, but Satyam, if we're still around, you know, feel free to jump in and introduce yourself too. So go ahead, Walker. Yeah, uh, my name is Walker Lockard. I'm a customer success manager at Dato. I've been doing that for about a year now. Um, before that, I worked for a mechanical contractor in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and that's where I'm still at is here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, it's nice to meet you. Brent? Yeah, so, hey Sam, my name is Brett Settles. Um, I uh, manage the global customer success team for Revisto. Um, I've done this for about three years. And before that, I worked for a, a heavy industrial EPC out of St. Louis as the technology manager for about six years. And 
spent some time in the Autodesk channel before that. And yeah, just uh, really focused on this remote work stuff because we've been doing it since I started. So I thought this would be interesting here. Cool. Yeah, and so I'm Sati in Burma. I work for Pipe, which was recently acquired by Autodesk. So I'm now part of the strategic alliances and partnership team at Autodesk. Go ahead, Sam. Oh, okay, since I'm the one who initiated this. Okay. I'm Sam Lacito. I'm a CAD senior civil designer, and CAD services manager for Haley and Aldridge. Um, I've been doing that for about 10 years. I've been in the industry over 25 years, so I've been around for a long time. Uh, the remote work has been very interesting running a design group of, of 10 plus people dedicated and 50 plus engineers and designers. So this is, it's interesting. We've come a long way over the past few months, but there's mm -hmm. ups and downs, you know. You have your good weeks and bad weeks, at least I do, <laughs> where you need to get out of the basement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome, Sam. Um, I don't think Thank we you. met, so please forgive me. I felt like I felt no, like no, I knew everyone. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, all right, so the time's up. Um, so let me go ahead and show the cards and see, you know, let's talk through them. Um, but let's show the cards. All right, so the first one here is, um, you know, staying connected with industry friends. Absolutely, I think um, I wrote that, so um, that's definitely something that has helped, helped me stay sane. Um, the next one is, believe it or not, meetings, the collaboration of the team is much more engaging than it was prior to COVID. Interesting. Definitely would love to know more about this one because I feel that um, sometimes I'm missing this, like, you know, I, I think for me, like, I need to see someone's body language in a room so that I know that it tells me, okay, either I'm hitting the mark on the topic or I'm definitely missing or not understanding. So I definitely find this to be a challenge. Any thoughts on this one? I definitely feel like things have been so much more transactional with my yeah. interaction with colleagues, right? It's very much so, hey, I need this, do that. Whereas, you know, in the office, it was much more like, sure, I'd go to someone and ask them for something, but then mm -hmm. we'd talk about something else or someone walk by or whatever that may be. <laughs> Um, so trying to change the transactional nature of a lot of the conversations that I've been having. Yeah, that's a really good point. I, um, I wrote, I wrote, no, this go ahead. One. No, I was going to say, I wrote this one and it's, um, even though all my meetings are remote anyway, so to speak, because all of my operators are all over, all over the country, but mm -hmm. something has changed over the past few months. And first I thought people were lonely and just wanted to talk, but, um, I have to, I have to stop the meetings after an hour that mm -hmm. they're that and it's more of it's more of um talking about current projects or a problem or solving problems but they're not arguments as they were in the past as much as a, a collaborative session to solve a problem mm -hmm. so that seems to be the difference between them now the one thing I can't do and I don't know if anybody here has that issue is I am the only one on video on the meetings of 10 to 15 people they will not show their faces very few Ooh, yeah, that's interesting. So let's, I'm going to put that as a challenge. So I definitely want to come back to this one because I think that's a debatable question is like, do we show video on conference? Is that the norm? It, I feel like it's a norm for me, but what about you guys? How did, I how asked they... our HR department if I could require, I mean, I can recommend it, but I can't make anybody do, you know what I mean? I mm -hmm. can encourage people. So you keep encouraging and encourage them to turn their video on, but you, you get a lot of excuses. My laptop's closed. I don't have a webcam. I don't have, you know, stuff like that. But so I've been encouraging them, but still have, even though the meetings have been good. So it's kind of ironic that the best meetings I've had, but we've, we've never really seen each other, you know, <laughs> the group meetings. I always you know just I mean? wonder if it's appropriate that like, I'm not at a desk. Sometimes I'm working on the couch and like, should I turn yeah. my camera on? I'm just yeah. on the couch. <laughs> I, I, I wonder, think, yeah. I go ahead, Brett. Go ahead. Go ahead, Brett. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you know, all I was going to say is, is I, I find this shift really interesting because Revisto has always been remote. Um, that's how we've been able to kind of source talent in different parts of the country and stay lean. But before this, we were meeting each other at client visits. We were meeting each other at industry events. So you always got that FaceTime, right? Ever since the, the pandemic hit, 
Um, our CEO hasn't necessarily said you have to turn your camera on, but he has said, I want you to turn your camera on in the meetings. And what we found is, is that we're using it as a means internally to stay more personally connected. Since we only had those, those opportunities, you know, three, four times a year to see each other face to face. Now we're getting even less of that. And um, it, it's really kind of added some of that like personal touch, that body language, like you were talking about, you know, back to the meetings. And um, it was something that we didn't do, even though we were working remote before that, we didn't do it pre pandemic. And we've also seen that many of our clients are engaging in video conversations as well, since everyone's not meeting face to face. So, uh, you know, the transactional nature of it, as Satyam said, um, was definitely there before because you knew you were going to get that personal touch in some other form uh, throughout the year. But now in order to make those transactional meetings something more, we've engaged in turning the camera on a lot more. Um, my camera's on by default in pretty much every engagement that I do. And before this, it was by default off. So, you know, for what that's worth, that's kind of what we've seen. Yeah, yeah. I've also seen a pretty big difference in new employees, right? We've had a number of new employees start at our organization mm -hmm. during this time. And, and obviously I haven't had the chance to connect with them the same way that I already know all the people that I was in the office with. Yeah. 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 These are all really great points, but I really like what you said, you know, Brent, I think, you know, the transactional has always been there and I think you're right. You know, we were always counting on some other ways to be personal, whether it's that initial handshake or that, you know, beer afterwards, like, you know, that this was business, but you know that, you know, maybe you're going to have a beer or wine or whatever that is afterwards and you're going to get more relaxed to get personal. So that's a, that's a really good point. Um, I want to move on. Um, to the other ones, so we have a couple of cards, but um, the next one is being able to uh, speed up the cadence of processes that requires travel or on-site meetings before. Yes, I think, I definitely think uh, with this, you know, you know, one of the positive things is pushing things out the door, um, but could that also hinder us in a way where we're like, are we producing way too much um, in the sense where maybe our, our managers are thinking, wait, if you've been able to do this this whole time, like, you know, what's, what's going on that? But I definitely agree with this one. Any other thoughts here? So I, I, shared, I shared this one, and I've, I 1,000% percent took this position because I wanted to travel. I didn't have the opportunity to do that much before. And, um, yeah, like, it's been a concern for me that, like, wow, we're, we are proving that we can do so much stuff um, really efficiently remotely now. And um, of course, like in the context of the pandemic, there's no other option, right? Like there's no, a customer can't opt in right now to an on-site onboarding, for instance. Um, so yeah, like part of me is like, oh, this might mean that I don't get to travel as much as I did um, in the past, even after mm -hmm. the pandemic's done. But in, in reality, it's uh, forced us to take it's it's forced us to cut everything literally all the fat and and really challenge ourselves to cut all the fat from our onboarding process um because it sucks to be on a on a um on a call for more than an hour like you mentioned um i don't like it i know customers don't like it um and you know when you're when you when you're going to travel when you're going to be on site somewhere you kind of have the expectation that you're going to have a meaty hunk of content to entertain you know mm -hmm however many group of people and when you're on a phone call it's the exact opposite it's mm -hmm. this needs to be as concise as possible because chances are your audience also has a few other monitors in front of them that they're staring at so yeah that's kind of that, that's kind of been my my experience and and i think that on-site on-site meetings are actually going to have a really uh, they're going this is going to have a positive impact on on-site meetings because we've done so much work for our off-site um meetings to make them as lean as possible. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I mean, even from our end, I mean, one of the things, and, and uh, I believe everyone in here is a vendor, right? So they're having their industry conversation, we're all selling stuff. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, that I wanted to bring up is the fact that these clients now not given the, the option to have those um, 
handshakes, right? There were many clients that we had that were like, oh yeah, we think we're going to go the route. We're going to use your tool. We're going to buy in. We're going to buy into the process, but we want to meet you first, right? So then you start to lengthen the sales cycles, right? Because you got, okay, now I've got to get an airplane ticket. I've got to get out to New York or Los Angeles or Canada or wherever it is. You have to go meet, do the handshake. And these are all things that are going to return, right? I, I mean, there are many people in our industry that are going to go back to that when, when we can. But one of the things I found as a benefit of a vendor is, is without that choice, they've got to make a decision based on the services, the technical and, and value that your product brings. And so what we've seen is, is that it actually speeds up the, the, the decision-making process on the client end, right? About if they, now, of course, we get no's quicker now too, right? <laughs> you know, so. But I mean, that's. That's also, I feel like that's a positive it too, is. right? Mm -hmm. I, um, I agree. I, another, remember we were talking about like my perspective now in industry as a CSM um, is like now I'm, I'm hoping that we disqualify people <laughs> faster, right? Like if mm -hmm. it's just not going to work, then let's, let's move on and work on things that are going to yeah. be good for both of us. And uh, so, yeah, I, I agree with you, by the way. I do think that it's um, our sales cycle has, has sped up, right? I think with that, you know, I, I think in addition to having our sales cycle sped up, I think it also makes us conscious as a company, like, you know, are we hitting those pain points right away? Are we hitting that why? You know, as, you know there's a reason why the client looked at us first, because there's, there's a potential possibility that we're able to solve a problem. However, are we, are we much more strategic in presenting that solution right away so they can make the solution? I think it forces us as a company to really start with the why first. Don't mean to sound like Simon Sinek. No. However, there's definitely a lot of truth to that. So. And I, I, think, I think also what a struggle can be like psychologically is that someone, um, someone goes from um, cold to sold um, having go, going that much quicker mm -hmm. and then the velocity drops um immediately after the contract sign and um you're it's kind of like a, a pacing misalignment right mm -hmm. where we wanted um we closed this deal and uh it was it was quick but really their implementation schedule now we're stuck in the real world implementation schedule, right? Not the digital yeah. implementation schedule. It's no, we still have people on job sites who are physically going to work every day, who have responsibilities that they get paid to do. That isn't implementing mm -hmm. software, right? Yeah. And, um, and we have to pivot from that fast sales cycle to the normal implementation schedule. Mm -hmm. and, and that gets a lot more challenging too, because you know, if you, if you guys operate anything like we do, I mean, we start with technology people, right? Uh, it could be someone in the, you know, the CIO, it could be a BDC manager, but normally this person is tech, technologically adept in some way. Mm -hmm. What really benefited us in, you know, in the field and getting our tool out to the field was the hands-on meetings, the ability to go to a trailer, talk mm -hmm. to a superintendent, show them the tools, show them how easy it was. So even though the, cycle, the sales cycles are getting shorter, the, the implementation is actually a lot more difficult than it's ever been, especially when you get mm. into people that don't live and breathe technology. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because now you have to find a way to communicate something to them that you used to simplify as much as you could. And now not only can you not simplify it right in front of their eyes, but you're also communicating virtually, which adds another layer of technology frustration. Um, I would say that our conversations with field personnel, you know, have dropped, you know, not because they don't want to talk to us, but one, it's harder to do. And two, with, you know, everything that's going on with COVID, they are now tracking additional data in the field related to who's getting sick, where were they, when are they coming back to work? So, it's really weird. It's, I think, Walker, you said it really good. Everything is kind of lopsided on the time scale, right? You're selling quicker, but you're implementing longer with more challenges. So it's interesting how it all, you know, plays out given the situation, the very odd situation that we've all been put in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's really good. Lots of good points here. Uh, I definitely want to move on to these cards quickly and then move on to the next question. 
Um, having access to co-working uh, space, yes. I think that's definitely something that's helped us stay grounded. Um, I think this one's yours, Brent, um, based on some of the comments you made earlier. You've always worked remote since I joined the company, so internally things are as normal. Um, and so you kind of talked about some of the challenge which you kind of addressed um, earlier. And the last one is keeping a schedule and routine, taking breaks as scheduled and trying to manage a balanced work life. Um, yes, I'm going to miss this when we go to the office because I love cooking, you know, middle of the day and having a hot meal or walking my dog. So I'm definitely going to miss this component. I think it helps my sanity. Um, and I think also I love the fact that, um, you know, at the office, it's so easy to talk to someone else negatively. And I think I love the fact that I can just go outside and just stay with my own within my own home and just kind of like deal with it myself. And I think it's helped me stay positive instead of holding on to some things where they're not working my way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one, one thing I'd like to point out, and I'll, I'll be brief about it because yep. I know we've got to go on, but uh, even though I experienced this a few years ago, I was at my old job, I was in the office or I was on site. I was never working from home unless it was the evening or I was sick or something like that. And one of the things that I know a lot of people are probably going through is the isolation, the mental isolation part of it, right? Like when I moved from my old job to this job and I found myself at this kitchen table or, you know, in a bedroom or something, there were a couple, you know, three, four weeks into this scenario, I was like, did I make the right choice? Not necessarily for, for what I'm doing for a living, but my, my personal situation, right? It, you know, I feel like I need to be with people. And even though I'm used to that, and anyone that's ever worked remote is used to that, you know, you've got the whole workforce going through that, you know, type of kind of, it's just odd, you know, people just aren't used to it. And, and I think that also plays into the mentality of how well remote work actually works, right? Are people mentally suited to do it? And how did it, does it affect their work, either positively or negatively? Yeah, I really like that. I really do. That's I like. I like the mental isolation is definitely real. Um, all right, let's move to the next column. Um, and um, what are some of the? Hmm, this is the first time I'm using Metro Spec. Sorry. Now I now I get it. Okay. Sorry, I probably should have had you write everything out first and then I can show the card. So that's my fault. Um, okay, so the next one. What are some of the challenges you're facing both personal and professional? Um, so we'll take about two minutes to fill this out. So I'm gonna set the timer and you guys can go. Um, would you guys be okay if you fill out the rest of the cards? Yeah. We'll take maybe five minutes this time. Is that enough? Yeah. Okay, let me um, set the timer to five minutes. I think that makes more sense. So I wanna make sure we get through them and we write some stuff in there. All right, so timer starts. I just put two minutes on the clock so I hear people typing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm actually facing one of these challenges we're talking about as we speak. So. <laughs> All right, make sure to fill out the other columns too. Um, And then after this, um, what I'll do is I'll enable the voting option and we'll, we'll discuss sort of the top three at each column, um, the one with the most votes. So this way we can kind of help us focus a little bit more. So I think we have another uh, 25 minutes left. So this will help us stay focused. Okay, 30, 30 seconds. <clears throat> How are you doing, Sam? I'm writing. All right, so I just want to make sure. <laughs> How are you doing? Just make sure. <laughs> Some of these are interesting because you really don't know. Yeah. yeah. You really don't know. I used to travel all the time. Once every I, couple of weeks. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. It's every. I was gone every other week, everywhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. now, I'm I'm my, now I'm in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> I've pretty much traveled um, for about the last, well, geez, at this point, I'd say 13, 14 years, once or twice a month. Yeah, this is the longest I've ever been at home. I could see you from what 
from what you from what I know about your product and everything, I could see it. You kind of need to show people, don't you, in person? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say because that's the whole selling point of it. Well, in my opinion, I mean. Yeah, I would also well, add. I would also add that for me, if people are a bit um, uh, not technology savvy, you have to be there. And I don't know another way to just tell them. I'm I'm so close to giving people longitude and latitude of their screen. Like if you you have to be so specific, and they're like, I don't see it. It's like it's right there. It's right yeah. there. So it's frustrating when you're on the web. You're just like, you know, I'm part of this other nonprofit organization, and there was someone there who was just like having a hard time, and I was like, I give up. I can't help you. I just don't understand how I can. But anyways, I digress. But okay, so let me enable the the voting option. So we'll vote for the, uh, we'll vote on each one of the columns and then we'll come back and kind of just focus on the top three so we can uh, make the most of our time. So let me enable that now. And so let's start with the second column about the challenges. So go, feel free to vote. Um, so we'll take a couple minutes to do that. And I think, uh, hold on, I might have screwed something up. Uh, one, two. I'm going to increase the number of your votes. You get six total votes. Two, four, six. Uh, make it eight. Um, so you have eight votes. So use them wisely. Personal and professional. So the first one is setting boundaries. I never know when to stop working. Oh my gosh, that is so true. So true. Um, you know, any thoughts on this? It's uh, hard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is also, um, how can I say this? It's kind of guilt, right? Yeah. And, and I hate to put it that way, but for instance, you're at home, right? Like, I just had an episode with my daughter. I don't know what's going on yet, but I'll find out as soon as this meeting's over. But when you're at home, you're distracted, right? You take time, oh, these dishes need to be done. If I don't have to do them this evening, then, uh, you know, I might as well get them done now. End of the day comes, and then you're like, all right, well, I did a few things today, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna catch up on what I missed, and next thing you know, it's 7.30 at night, right? And this is a big challenge, because you really have to define and be disciplined about what is my work day, what is not my work day, because what will eventually happen, especially to people that are in this industry, and especially people like us that are, are trying to drive the industry forward, is you will work around the clock if you don't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. And it's it so may not be every, yeah, it may not be every minute of every hour, but even if you're working 40 minutes of every hour, eventually that can lead to burnout, you know, all sorts of bad things that can actually hurt your performance at work. So yeah, I mean, I think, I think that the hard thing about this for everyone is, is that when I get in the car and I drive to the office, I have one goal. And that goal is to, to do my job really well. Yeah. When you're at home, you potentially have endless amounts of goals, and they could be distracting from your work day, which then forces you to think about, well, how many things did I do today that didn't involve my main work goal, and how can I squeeze those into my evening or my weekend? Mm -hmm. and, and that's dangerous. Yes, agreed. Any other thoughts? Sam? I 100% I agree with Brett. But I also think that you also have to, by establishing the boundaries, you have to let the company know your boundaries as well. Uh, I was doing um, the Zoom call with my granddaughter, believe it or not, on Tuesdays at noon. But the we wanted they wanted to have a project meeting, and and I think if there's a little respect going both ways that you you have to set that. So I was I was really good at turning my stuff off at 12 to 12 45 every day and then shutting down at five but you slowly you can get caught back up in it because the last few weeks i've been on at 7 38 at night like you said brett and i've been on at four in the morning so it's yeah unless you and i mean i got good at it for a few weeks and then i went back to my normal habits like you said oh i've got to take my car in to get something fixed i'll make up the two hours at the end of the day or whatever it is and you end up working more i find myself working more now than I did when I drove to work because, and I was an hour away, so I'm, you know, 50 miles, so 
that long ride gave me the break, but not having that mental break between the two is different too. But I also felt, and I have told leadership people here that, um, and try not to schedule meetings during lunch or after five, because you know we're in different time zones. I try not to do that to my team either, to respect that because my team, I mean, they have, they have West Coast time, East Coast time and mountain time. So we have to try to figure out what's the best approach. I don't want anybody to work through lunch or skip. You know, that time is important, especially mentally. Yeah. That's my thought on it. I think setting the boundaries is, it's hard, it's very hard to do, at least in my experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I had to do that really early on. And I think that's something that just in general, I mean, it was like maybe two weeks into the pandemic. I, at that point in time, um, it was me and one other remote employee. And now, of course, we're all remote. Um, but basically it was just like, guys, we got to stop all these, like, we just need to stop all these meetings. We can't have meetings yeah. at the same cadence that we did when everybody was in the same room. And cause getting on a zoom call is, is a different level of mentally taxing yeah. than, um, so, I mean, they implemented, um, intention like company wide standards at Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. There's no big company meetings. So there's nothing like it. It's meetings that are supposed to be smaller than four people, basically. Um, that was a really good boundary that was, that's policy, right? Yeah. That um, our leadership put into place. But um, I don't know, I forget what I was going <laughs> to, I forget what I was going to say, um, kind of following up to that. That's a great but, yeah. um, company mandated policy mm-hmm. to do that. I, like you said, it's fantastic. Oh, the, yeah. um, the, uh, uh, the meetings, like the, the boundaries. So I, I live in the central time zone and I have customers on, um, from, from sea to shining sea. And, um, I even try to, to, to keep things between nine to five. Yes. I'm here at seven o'clock in the morning. Right. Um, but just like for my own sanity, so that I'm not, so I'm kind of like centered and mentally present, um, and also happy to be on a phone call. Typically, mm-hmm. I don't schedule phone calls until um, 9 a.m. or afterward, and I don't schedule them before, or I don't schedule them t- to the point where they're going to go after 5 p.m. And also telling my West Coast coworkers, because they're all on the West Coast, um, like, hey, guys, 3 o'clock your time is like, yeah, that's, that's kind of that's kind of pushing a little bit. Please only do that. Yeah. I, I'm not going to tell them no. Like, if you need to meet, like, then let's meet. But also, like, let's just be mindful. Mm-hmm. Agreed, agreed. Uh, uh, yeah, I think um, the second one here is keeping a set schedule, getting my team and employer to understand boundaries, lunch, family, time, et cetera. So I, I, I think, Sal, you, I'm sorry, Sal. I'm, I'm, I'm switching your last name with your first name. I mean, Sam. Sam, you had talk, talked about this, you know, already where, you know, having – that's uh, that's very important um, in here. Uh, so the one people that is staying healthy when not while not being able to see people and collaborate in person. Oh man, this is so true because um, I I recently discovered well not recently discovered but I I I I feel like when I'm more conscious about taking care of myself, then my performance output is. Um, it's better. And when I notice where I sort of allowed my mood to kind of go with like, well, I'm just not going to go for a walk or I'm just going to go ahead and have that delicious, you know, pizza or whatever. I just, it just, it just, it's, it sets a domino effect for, you know, not just in my personal life, but also like my work life. And I'm starting, I, I don't know because I'm here by myself at home and I, I I'm with my thoughts. Um, but I feel like there's, I'm starting to see more and more of a correlation. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I um, I feel like I don't, over these last couple of weeks, I got back on schedule going to bed at 9.30. And yeah. I always wake up at 6 o'clock. I can't help it. There's nothing. I could go to bed at 5, 5 a.m. and still be awake at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, like, it, but so i would gotten this, um, got an, this schedule where I'd go to bed at nine thirty because then I'd be well rested um, once I woke up. But yeah, yeah, like this week already already breaking that going to bed at at um, eleven or midnight. 
And yeah, like Tuesday, today's Tuesday and that's all right. But on Friday, I'm going to be an unhappy person. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more challenging too, right? Because, um, you, you know, being at home, the other thing, and I don't know if anyone else has children, but I've got three. I've got a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a four-year-old. And, um, you know, when they're at home and they're watching you work, you know, they've got school stuff to do. And mine, you know, recently have gotten more involved in that. But it starts to, to stack up to where, you know, you, you feel like you need to give those other things in your personal life that attention in the evening. Well, what was that time normally used for, right? It might have been for your own well being. It might have been the time that you went to the gym. It might have been the time where you played intramural, you know, intramural volleyball. You know, it could be any of those things. But given the situation that we're all in, you're taking stuff from your day, putting it into the evening, taking stuff from your evening, putting it into the day. And a lot of that time can evaporate really quickly. So I would think that it would be really easy for people to fall into a trap where they're not giving themselves the same level of care that they always have because of the, the schedule, the schedule and responsibility um, shakeup. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. It's important to give ourselves that same level of care, like making time, scheduling time. That's a good idea. Um, scheduling that time to do that one thing that you love, whether um, it's, you know, whatever it is, a hobby, I know, Walker, you love to, you know, spend some of your free time exploring tech. Um, you know, that's something you've always, I've always known you to do. Like, this is the way that you also do stress on that. Um, so let's move on to the next column. So I feel like we're, any minute they're going to tell us, you have 10 minutes left. Um, but I want to try to get through this as much as possible. So um, the, the third column, what do you, uh, how do you measure engagement? This is going to be a good one. What are the, uh, what are the, I wrote this and I can't see it. So let me make this screen bigger. Um, what are the key performance indicators um, that are, uh, that are good remote team meeting workshops, et cetera. So uh, what are the good KPIs that indicate that you have a good remote team meetings workshop indicator. So the top two, we'll take the top two. Uh, first one is active participation. I started asking people to talk by asking questions specifically to the individual and not the team. Ooh, this is a, this is interesting. Active participation. Um, That's me. <laughs> yeah, let's dive into that. I, that I I, it almost is just like the third one down. It sort of turned into a round table type. Mm-hmm. You know, and when I read that one, it's sort of similar. Yeah. So before when I do, my meetings are structured around um, workload, resourcing. Um, but I started, I changed them in a way where I started asking people how they were and calling them more to show more of a personal connection and then kind of sharing that with people to a certain level that they were comfortable with. There were people that wouldn't even talk. But if I get them, if I go around the room and just say, hey, Hey, Tom, you know, how was your week? What are you working on? Then they'll talk. Before I used to just, well, we used to just show PowerPoints, do a demo, and you, nobody would, you would know if someone was upstairs, you know, making dinner or, or at the meeting. So now they're, they're different. So that's what I meant by active participation. How to measure it is just by, I think, the interaction of the people. I mean, it, it and I have to say, I'm not one, you know, years ago you could have told me, Oh, I got to go to another meeting, got to go to another meeting. But the last few I've had have been fun. They've actually mm -hmm. been fun. And it's not me that's doing the arguing. I'm just not the arguing, the collaborating. I'm just initiating the conversation between other people on the team to mm -hmm. solve some kind of problem, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So it does, it does dovetail into that, the round table type. So that's sort of what it is. If yeah, I answered mean, the question. I mean, I don't even know yeah. if I answered the question. I went off on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. This is what it's for. Uh, but I, I, I think, I think I, I'm, you know, I like the fact that, you know, you're changing things up and, um, you know, you even put that accountability on me to like, Hey, who are the people in the room? Like, you're right. We, we need to make that personal connection. And I think, um, I forget I'm guilty. Um, you know, and I think I, I forget that I already have personal connections when I, and 
with everyone already and I take that for granted. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely important. Um, question for you guys. I like the fact that you say, you, you know, the way that you can measure, measure is by the level of engagement. Um, you know, is it truly measurable? You know, can, you know, can we put a number? We were, if we were challenged to put a number on engagement, what would that look like? I, I don't I think, have so an answer. <laughs> for, for me, it's the amount of time it takes me to get real answers from people. <laughs> When I say real answers, I mean like truthful answers and because we say we say things all we say things all the time that are pithy and they they're you're just saying something in order to check the box to answer the question. Mm -hmm. And it can be a struggle because customers want to do that, right? And it's like, you know, you're I'm trying to figure out how or I'm trying to learn how I can prove to you that oh we got a minute. Um how I how I can what? prove to you that yeah. He gave a five minute warning about, yeah, oh, I guess I five minutes it. ago, I it. Sorry. but, uh, I'm, I'm trying to learn how I can prove to you that, that, uh, our software solves problems for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And some of the, like one, a common response or a common thing of when we start talking about how do we measure this and how do I prove that to you is often, well, if, if people are, are using it, if people are logging into it. And it's like, that is such like, <laughs> a tiny answer like and yeah. it's not it's not false but i think in, in good engagement gets beyond that and it's like how much time does it take me to to coerce better answers mm -hmm. um higher fidelity answers out of people i think that's kind of a measurement of in, of engagement and how present someone is mentally yeah you got to give everybody the opportunity to speak too uh, with our third roundtable talk, we, we were back to the remote work discussion and what expectations should look like when it comes to the new reality we're all in when it comes to remote work. Uh, I was moderated by Lil, um, who did a great job of kicking the conversation off. And, and I was there, able to be there in the beginning, interested to hear where you guys ended up, Lil. Yeah, thank you, Satyam. So, oh, perfect. Thank you for sharing this screen. So I, I wanted to take a different fun approach to this discussion since I didn't have you know, uh, uh, you know, folks to moderate. It, it was very much, you know, we wanted to do something different uh, with this remote session and kind of having just an open conversation on, you know, you know, how are things going? First of all, having that check, you know, you know, checking on each other. I think that's definitely important during this time when we're all working um, on some great projects, but we're all working at a distance. So the first thing we start off with this is just checking things, you know, what's working, what's not working. Um, and the, the truth here is, you know, right now, you know, everyone is finding that working remote is efficient. Um, it's definitely forcing us to have much more of a focus approach when it comes to, you know, implementing or onboarding a process. Um, there are a couple of challenges in there that comes with it, especially when it comes to implementing technology. Um, you, you, you know, there's definitely a need um, to be there. Um, other things um, that are working is we're being more intentional with our why. Um, you know, oftentimes that cycle of our interaction with clients, um, whether they're, um, you know, they're, they're having to make that decision much quicker than before um, if they're going to do business with you or however the project is going to turn out. So, you know, having bubbling up those pain points, you know, at the very beginning and kind of making sure that that's more intentional has become something that we're all working and it's working really good during this time. Um, some of the challenges um, with what we're facing today and the truth is that mental isolation is real. Um, you know, there are, you know, some of us shared about how we have some doubts with our personal situation, whether, you know, we're having moments in our life right now where are we doing the right thing? You're having to question your own decisions. So there are those moments where you have to be more intentional in staying healthy and making time for yourself. Um, another thing, um, another thing that was mentioned as far as challenges is meetings seem to be more transactional. And I really like um, what was said in the group where the, the transaction factor has always been there. We've always relied on some other way to, you know, connect with that individual, whether that's a post happy hour or maybe, a, you know, coffee beforehand. So there's, we can always rely that we'll have that moment to connect and empathize with the person. Now it's just more, here we are, here's our business and see you later. So now we're being more intentional 
um, we're seeing that more as transactions. So that's definitely a challenge we're facing, facing today. Um, one of the other challenges we have is setting boundaries. Um, we never know when to stop, when to stop working. And that's something where our group definitely felt like, yeah, this is really hard. When do we disconnect? You know, even though if you're, um, Brent from Rubitzo mentioned, even if you're working 40 minutes and, you know, uh, you know, throughout the day that could end to burnouts or, you know, just working around the clock. Um, but one thing that was, that was said in the group to overcome that challenge is, you know, making that a pol policy from the leadership to really, you know, create those boundaries of, of when work is stopping and, you know, when family time or personal time um, continues. Um, one, and then the other thing we talked about is how are we measuring this engagement? Um, definitely there was an, an agreement from the group is having active participation, audible participation. Um, you know, you have to make that intention to ask those folks in the meeting, you know, what their thoughts are, any questions. Um, audible summaries is something that was mentioned. Um, when you want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're asking your teammates to, or your managers, this is what I understood in making that audible versus before you're relying on that personal interaction uh, or, or physical cues that, you know, there's, you know, there's an understanding of, of, of what the communication that's being relayed. Um, we kind of didn't have a chance to really dive into these last two columns, but we definitely put our thoughts at the very beginning. Um, but one of them is, you know, should, uh, webcams be on or off is definitely a topic that's been of debate in this group for a number of months. Um, and I think it's absolutely sort of a unanimous like, yes, they should be on. There are moments we don't want to have them on just because, you know, we're having a bad hair day or sometimes I just don't want to comb my hair. Just I'll be honest. Um, but I, you know, having the webcam on really gives us a level of interaction and connection, you know, with with our colleagues and our industry industry friends. Um, I put the link to this uh, uh, fun retro uh, if you want to take a look and kind of take a deeper dive in what we've talked about. If you want to add some more stuff and on your own or just take a screenshot and share that with your team, feel free. But uh, thank you, Sakim. Thank you. Well, I really like the fun retro. It was a great way to visualize the responses and kind of resonate with it and as opposed to just the normal way we have the conversations 